You sigh deeply, resting your cheeks on your palms as you prop your elbows on the table, trying to focus on the work in hand. It was rather difficult to concentrate in anything, really. The image of the angel burnt on the inside of your eyelids, and you remembered how he had been acting strange towards you in the last couple of weeks. How Castiel avoided you like the plague, going to the point where he would completely ignore your presence in the same room and leave as fast as he could whenever you were around. It would already hurt enough, weren't you, harboring feelings for that exact same angel. You grimaced at the very thought, grunting loudly. The sound caught the attention of the younger Winchester, who had been sitting across from you, reading from another book. Listener? He frowned upon your disheveled state. Your eyebrows shot up in surprise and glanced at him. Yeah? You had been sighing and grunting a lot lately, Sam explained with a glint of amusement in his eyes, but still edging worry. I just can't focus, <laughs> you shrugged. I suppose I need some more coffee, you said, making a movement to get up. But Sam beat you to it, standing up and firmly but gently pressing you down to your seat by your shoulders. No more coffee for you. You haven't eaten anything for over a day. No one can live on caffeine, listener. Honestly, you look exhausted. <laughs> I bet I do, you murmured, rubbing your eyes as if on cue. Go rest a bit. I'll grab something for us to eat. He appreciated that even at the verge of exploding, Sam managed to take care of you, like you always had done. You placed your hand over his and squeezed lightly, trying to express at least part of your gratitude. Thank you. He smiled and kissed the top of your head. I'll be right back. You watched as he moved away and only when he was out of sight, you let your body relax falling back onto the chair you closed the book in front of you and glanced around you considered taking a nap but there was too much caffeine in your blood you need to spend that energy and once it was over you surely would have bla blacked out you stretched your arms and legs and heard your joints popping with the sigh of relief you were in the midst of getting up when there was a flutter of wings followed by a loud thud. Your heart sped off and you immediately looked up, startled. Cass! His name fell from your lips with a cry and you rushed to the side of the angel, kneeling beside his laid form. You reached to touch him but stopped as you took in all the injuries, afraid of only worsening it. What happened? Angels. He fought to speak, like if it caused a great pain. You flinched in empathy. Where are you hurt? Your voice failed in the last word. Expressing your dread for the angel, Cass refused to meet your eyes, even at that moment. Please, Cass. I need you to tell me, he sighed, stomach, left shoulder, and back, he muttered, okay, you said, trying to steady yourself, do you think you can get up? Castiel nodded and you helped him up, careful not to touch any of the wounds as you wrap your arm around his middle, and placed his right arm draped over your shoulders to support himself. You weren't sure where to take him to, but eventually led him to your room. Take off your coat and shirt, you bluntly ordered. Entering the nurse mode so you wouldn't be embarrassed, he seemed surprised. So I can see your wounds. 
Hugh explained. He didn't move. You sighed and reached for his coat. May I? You asked and felt your heart shattering at his hesitation as he held your wrist. Did he not trust you or just didn't want you to touch him? Both possibilities hurt. Finally, Castiel nodded and let go of you. He smiled awkwardly and pushed the coat off his shoulders with a suit jacket and silently cursed yourself at your trembling fingers as you as you took off his tie and unbuttoned his shirt. Once his upper body was visible, you analyzed the damage with a frown, trying not to linger your eyes on any other unnecessary parts. One particularly nasty gash on his shoulder and three smaller injuries at his stomach. You saw his muscles tensing as you glanced at his back. You lifted an eyebrow. Are you healing yourself? A little, maybe. But I'm too weak to completely heal the wounds. Right. He spoke, not mentioning how his back was perfectly fine. Sit down. He sat at the edge of their bed with a huff huff, seeming relieved he could rest. You quickly ran to the bathroom, gathering everything you could need from the first aid and rushed back to Castiel. You decided it would be better to start on his shoulder. It'll sting a bit, okay? He said as you kneeled on the bed and started cleaning the wound. A small hiss left his lips at the contact, but he soon grew quiet. After finishing, you looked up at his face and was surprised to meet his deep blue eyes staring directly at you, with a mix of pain and some unknown feeling. Now, that's the worst part. I'll stitch it up. Can you handle it? Castiel nodded, and you smiled reassuringly. You did a quick job, and he didn't complain a bit, which made things easier. As soon as you were done, you gave him a proud smile and went to clean the other three injuries, much smaller than the first. You patched them and sighed when it was all done. There you go. Is there anything else I could do? He looked down bashfully and you thought you were imagining his cheeks flushing. My, my back. He whispered. You tilted your head to the side, a habit you caught from him, confused. There's nothing. But then it hit you. It would explain why he seemed in so much pain and discomfort. Castiel, he called abruptly, waiting until he decided to look up to speak again. Is it your wings? He quest you questioned softly. Yes. The answer was so quiet that you wondered if you heard it correctly. Can I help you with them? You offered. I mean, I can't see them, but do you think I could help in any way? Your senses are too limited to perceive my wings, he explained but I might be able to make it so you could see them. You nodded your head and took a step back, giving him some space. Castiel took a deep breath and closed his eyes. He recited something, probably in Enochian, as you couldn't understand a single word. Your eyes had lingered on his lips as he spoke, but you saw a shadow growing over his shoulders from your peripheral vision and your eyes widened as they met the large black wings. You gaped in awe. They're so beautiful, you said, and Castiel smiled at the words. You carefully approached him, never leaving his gaze on yours, to make sure he was alright with your proximity. He seemed nervous, 
but didn't do anything to stop you. You took a good look at his wings and grimaced at the blood sticking to the feathers. You decided those wounds would be better taken care of with different instruments. I'll be right back, you warned before you left. You came back holding a bowl of warm water and a fluffy towel. You climbed onto the bed and kneeled behind him. You bathed the towel on the bowl. May I? You asked. Castiel was glad you were behind him. This way, you wouldn't see how flustered and bashful he looked. Yes, he said. You were gentle as you cleaned the blood and stopped whenever he flinched, asking if you could continue. He would always agree. You stopped once it looked well enough and placed the bowl filled with now cold water on the floor together with the red stained towel. You scooted back to him and plucked the loose feathers, apologizing at the ones that weren't as loose as you thought. Instead of saying you were done, absentmindedly, you ran your fingers through his wings, brushing the soft feathers. Castiel sighed, and you noticed what you had been doing. Sorry, he quickly said, stopping immediately. No, it, it felt good, he said. You smiled and went back to threading your fingers on the raven wings. Missing the happy smile and closed eyes on the angel's face. The silence that followed felt comfortable. Just both of you enjoying each other's company until Castiel decided to break it. You were the first human I've ever shown my wings to. Is that so? The wings are the most vulnerable part of an angel. It requires great trust and to deliberately unfold them with your back turned into someone. I'm glad you trust me enough for that. I trust you with all of my grace, dear listener. You're the most wonderful being I've ever met. His words made your heart jump with happiness and your smile to widen. Thank you, Cass, you whispered. It had been difficult for me to even stand next to you lately. Castiel said, confusing you. Your fingers stopped their motion on his feathers. Your soul is so appealing, so beautiful. I can't help but being dragged to you every time you're close to me. I try to avoid it, but... I can't. Not anymore. He, co- he confessed shyly. The beam in your face w- could li- light the whole room and heard his voice as you jumped off the bed. Standing in front of the sitting angel, he seemed worried, but as soon as his eyes met yours, a soft smile graced his features. You hugged him. Chuckling softly, he pulled you on the lap, wrapping his arms around you like you would vanish any second. His wings folded back in place. I believe I love you, listener. I love you too, Cass. You looked up at him and pressed a chaste, tentative kiss on his lips. He immediately replied, grinning. You settled comfortably on his chest. The caffeine had already worn out of your system, and you felt all the sleepless hours come back to a yawn. Castiel noticed and placed you back on the bed, laying next to you and fo- unfolding one of his wings over your form as he cuddled you. Thank you, listener. He didn't specify for what, but you knew. Anytime, you mumbled, nuzzling onto his chest.
Hi guys! So, it's been a while, and uh, I'm sorry for that. The time I could have, like, used for writing and reading was used for my essays and readings for college, so... So, yeah. <laughs> and also, we're at, like, 100 plus subscribers. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Thank you for giving me a chance. Anyway, uh, please check out the author's work, leave a comment there, and show them some love. Okay, bye!